Hello everyone! Welcome to my studio. Today we're going to speak about corsets and acts and burlesque. I'm excited because it's been so long. And I want to say a particular thank you to Ibiza Burlesque Festival and Miss Safira for having me. Uh, she's a sweetheart and I hope you all follow her on her Instagram and Facebook and to log in into the virtual festival of Ibiza to see what's going on and what kind of fabulousness is happening there. So thank you for having me. Today we're going to speak about something super important for a burlesque performer and pinups as well. They use that a lot. The corset. So the corset is a masterpiece when it comes to a burlesque act, in my opinion, of course. And the corset is charged with history. You think about a corset, you automatically think about a woman from the Renaissance, you think about the Victorian era. Corsets killed women and corsets made women beautiful. So it's very important when you embody femininity to one, to own, to sport, to uh, flaunt one of those pieces. It's supposed to be an undergarment and today they're pieces of jewelry. So I wanna start with one of my very first corset and I'm not gonna wear them all because it's, it, it, takes, it takes a lot of energy to wear, to put on a corset and to remove one. Um, and I, I wanna talk about a few. So the first corset I had made to measure for myself. I had made the base at Il Bolero, which is a fetish, High end fetish couture shop in Montreal. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a milestone in Montreal. You can't come to Montreal and not go to Il Bolero. They're like a fantastic uh, shop, fantastic designers, and they work really well. So, this first corset, it's the first real one I have made. Um, I have had made, I mean. And this was for my bird act. Uh, I'm gonna show pictures as we go along. So I was at the beginning of my career and I wanted, you know, I wanted to go red. Why? Because in Montreal, we have a bird called the Cardinal. And every spring it comes around and sings oh so beautifully. So I wanted to, to have a red act, a red bird um, to, to kind of like commemorate the Cardinal of Montreal. And it was, it's an overpass corset. It's not the one that makes my, my waist the tiniest, uh, but uh, it, it's still very beautiful. I worked a lot on this corset. There's an enormous amount of Swarovski crystals and like the garters and oh I was so proud I'm still I'm proud of, of this work and I like it I did some colors you know and some like shapes to it it's uh it's one of my well they're all my favorite <laughs> they're all my favorite so the birds come like you see like with a beautiful beautiful cage and like a long uh, tails or pheasant feathers because obviously uh, we have to be creative in terms of creating that visual that makes you look like like a bird basically so instead of having a cage because I really don't like birds in cages I think birds should never be in a cage therefore I create a swing instead and it's a beautiful swing. I made it with my brother. 
uh, we worked together welding and cutting the metal in my mom's garage and I have a very fond memory this act um, is, is, is one of those who represent a lot to me uh, the other corset uh, here is from Wasted Couture uh, I have waited a long time to order from them I don't know why, uh, just because, I don't know, sometimes creativity plays tricks on you. And this one, I wanted to have it because uh, it's a candy. So, in this act, I come out of a giant cake. I mean, the cake is truly giant. It is a square base, has three three levels and it's made out of solid wood uh, happily it comes apart but um like the base is six feet by six feet it, it's truly gigantic and it's all upholstered uh i mean it's it's a beautiful piece but seriously like <laughs> to store this is a, truly a headache so here you go so this is from the candy uh, also an overbust corset uh, to my surprise uh, this one is very particular because on the inside you can see one side is rounded and the other side is pointy and honestly when I ordered it I didn't see that in the picture and I'm a Capricorn I like things like whatever's on the left should be on the right so I'm a little you know OCD uh, but that's okay that's me you take it to leave it so because of that it gives me the opportunity you know everything has a silver lining in life so this one gave me the opportunity to put a bow that kind of did not interfere with the shape and made it like higher anyway it totally worked out and I was very happy I'm still happy with it this one is uh, quite tight makes my waist go to um, normally 23 and now with this one I go down to I think 20 which is quite tight so my tightest but it's quite tight oh my god oh god again lots of Swarovski crystal um, you know uh, pink on pink and it's definitely one of I mean they're all my favorite I have to stop saying that and uh, it comes with a big bow on my butt which <laughs> I think it's so cute so that's the second corset uh, to, to each act there is a in my mind or the way I like to create it for each act there is there is a story there is something I want to express or a fantasy, purely a fantasy that I want to uh, portray. Like, you know, I am, I grew up with, you know, like stories of Walt Disney, like Cinderella and uh, the beauty, La, La Belle au Bois Dormant, the, the Sleeping Beauty and for me although as an adult i don't agree with a lot of those things that are portrayed because uh you know i won't get into this but it still made me dream it made me dream and it stimulated my imagination and although you would pay me i would not want to be a princess today uh that's not the kind of lifestyle I would wish for. But as a little girl, the imaginary scenario is, is um, how can I say? It triggers, it triggers things inside. Um, some, for some of us positive, some, some of us not so positive, but either way it creates, it stimulates something. Anyway, so for this gold act um, was created and this one corset, which I adore again, it's, it's all metal. So metal, like 
All my corsets are metal boning. This is metal boning, metal mesh. Once you're in there, you don't get help. You really need to know how. Uh, you know, the busk, because of the rhinestones are very tight. So it's always a bit of a stress as if, you know, when you're performing, you stay stuck, but there's a trick to it. And because of experience, I don't get stuck anymore, thank goodness. Uh, so yes, so this one was made because I wanted to create the story of a legend. So I created this story and I called it the legend of the golden sword. So the story goes that I, as Scarlett James, uh, get into a, a, some sort of temple in the continent of Asia and wearing the garb, which I got a lot of heat for, but I'm telling the story, I'm not in, I'm being me. I go and steal the sword and the guardian catches me and then there is an actual fight with a sword and a bamboo stick and uh, basically I charm the guard and I'm able to get away with the sword. Uh, but basically, foremost and above all, this story is a love story um, and that's why I created the golden corset. And um, of course, like you see the picture, there's the whole costume that goes with it uh, because you can never have, oh, this is a beautiful corset, but then the, the rest of the costume doesn't fit or it's not made of the same rhinestone. Anyway, like I said, I'm OCD, so <laughs> don't take what I say for uh, cash. Do what you want, be yourself. Um, another costume, and this one, I, I kind of prepare a little bit more of this costume because this one was made in collaboration with um, Vide Noir Couture. She's an Italian designer, and I just adore everything she does. She's very talented. Her work is well done, and it's been great working with her. She, she's amazing, um, very easy going. Uh, I can't say enough of how much I'm happy with her. But for this costume, she made this, you know, cage here uh, that's dangling with uh, stones, and then uh, the kind of a cape. There's also the headpiece here, which I, of course, added like green rhinestone and stuff like that, but she did the base. I added the, some uh, standing things as well, but basically that's her work. And, and it, it truly is amazing. I, I really, really am a big fan. Uh, for this costume, comes with a neck piece and everything. For this costume, um, she did not make the corset. This corset is from Sweet Carousel Corsetry. Uh, I think it's a Canadian company. And I, okay, I worked the inside, kind of look like messy and bloody. And that's on purpose. Let me explain to you why after. So this one is green and black. And I'm gonna show you from close because it's an enormous amount of work. All the lace, all the rhinestone, you know, it's been uh, all by hand, one by one. You know, sometimes you don't count a costume by by the hours you count them as Netflix episodes. Oh, that's two series of this this uh, show. Uh, oh no no, that was only three episodes, so I'm okay. Anyway, <laughs> so this is a corset. 
Again, it's not the tightest of my corset. This one makes my waist uh, down to 20, as the gold one makes my waist down to 18 inches. Um, so this one is more comfortable. It's an overbust. Uh, God, I had so much fun working on that. Um, I'm touching my costumes and there's a rainfall of rhinestones uh, as, as I move around. The maintenance on those costumes is intense, okay? Um, because there's a lot of material, a lot of rhinestones, uh, a lot of stones that are sewn in as well. So it breaks super easily. You have to re-glue anyway. Um, almost at every time you do a show, for sure, there is going to be some touch up after the show. It's a high level maintenance. Anyway, this costume is very special to me. Again, like everyone knows all my costumes are very special to me. Um, I'm gonna put it down because it rains rainstorm right now. Okay, so the story for this costume is very particular. I had the pleasure to work with a group of people for that act. Uh, first of all, a very, 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 talented dancer, his name is Haiko, who was basically my partner for this act. It's basically a love story. And basically the character is in a giant diamond or like a sapphire or uh, em emerald, I'm sorry, it's green, it's giant emerald. So it's like a metal structure with a glass bowl and like light underneath it looks really green it's really creepy i love it um every full moon she wakes up and uh <laughs> looks for her lover but obviously her lover has passed so she dances with the spirit of her lover and when the full moon is about to leave its place for the sun to come up, of course, the curse is that all the souls are taking her back into an, her emerald. But one of those souls is the soul of her lover. So the act is her dancing with the soul of her lover. Anyway, it's fantastic. And it's, it's on the music of Dracula, which is very like emotional and romantic and that's a perfect example of making a dream making a you know like a fantasy come to life sometimes it's not very easy to 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 bring that emotion into the stage and but with the music it's it's it really helps to come and sustain and support the act the dancer was amazing and i had a troupe from montreal who were also all dressed in black and doing the soul so and like creeping on the stage on the floor and that that was like gives such an effect and the smoke and it was <laughs> the whole production it was absolutely fantastic so for the last piece it's a masterpiece. So this one super heavy. It's very, very heavy. This one is an underbus corset. Honestly, I have not counted how many rhinestone there is on that thing because I have better things to do than count them. Um, so it's an underbus corset. It makes my waist about 19 inches when it's completely closed, which it always is. Uh, it's quite comfortable, uh, regardless. It was made by a designer here in Montreal. Her name is Sandra Chirico. Extremely talented. Her, her real job, her job, she works for the opera. She's a costumier at the opera here in Montreal. It's a very prestigious uh, place to work. So her work is absolutely impeccable. 
I can't, you know, like I did this piece, a piece like that is such an investment that you cannot have like 20 co costumes like this. Um, and one piece like that, if you take it, if, you, if you're really careful with it, you're going to have it for a lifetime. Uh, I'm very lucky. I have a good genetic. Uh, I'm the same weight since I'm 24 years old. I am not moving nor up nor down. Uh, my body is changing though, because as a woman, I am maturing, believe it or not, who knew? Um, but yes, so this is quite a workout to put on. Um, and it, it's, it's covered with rain, so I can show you a little closer. <laughs> Look at that. And in the back. So because it's so heavy and difficult, you cannot uh, fight with the, the, the normal busks. This one has a zipper. Uh, there, there's no way you could do it uh, without a zipper on this one. It's way too heavy. Uh, for this one, you have also the underwear that goes with it, which is a full underwear. It's not a G-string. Um, because sometimes I believe it's it's not necessarily how much you show it's basically about what you don't show in burlesque and uh, that's my philosophy that doesn't mean it is the philosophy that's my opinion that belongs to me and that's not imposed on anyone else uh, but my philosophy is yes it's about what you don't show and how you do not show it <laughs> But that's me so it's a full bottom underwear and uh, that's the bra here um, it does not stay on anyway in my act it's the only act in which I do that on this act I basically remove the bra before I remove the corsets um, so it's the only act in which I do that but if I were to do the other way around, if I were to remove the corset, the bra is so heavy that it would not stay on anyway. And the way it's made, I didn't want to have the strap on each side. And my, my mom, of course, works uh, with, my, uh, with me with, on my costumes. So uh, that's why they're all so precious to me uh, because there is also the element of having spend so, so, so much time with my mom uh, creating those those beautiful things and you can see in the back here you have all their shoes that match each and every costume carefully like this one never goes with that one um, and uh, but for this diamond uh, diamond set my mom had made like a diadem uh, to go with it with the same rhinestone and everything so it's, it's quite beautiful I love it very happy to wear it so when I put on my costume there is that added element of love I do burlesque because I love burlesque I love costuming I love telling a story on stage I love dancing um, it's it's like many other performer it's been like a heartbreak not to be able to perform for so long uh yeah and i miss it dearly and and i feel everyone's pain that we cannot produce we cannot perform um i don't know what's gonna happen uh, a lot of us have had to find jobs and other things to do but basically it is that i am so fortunate i am so happy and so grateful that i had the chance and i took the chance i jumped in the pool and and gave everything i got into burlesque i have absolutely no regrets I love it dearly. I am so glad I have had that in my life. I cannot tell you to which level it 
it brought me so much i could not even start listing it's too long of a list so i hope this video is not too long i love you very much and uh, i hope to see you again all very soon because oh my god i miss you uh performers and public and fans and oh mon dieu it's c'est trop difficile <laughs> c'est so difficult to be without you all um so yes so i hope we will be able to congregate soon and dance together and i love you all and thank you for watching and i send you all my love and so much more Oh my god oh my god it's so nice to be in a costume i feel like oh god i miss this girl where was she it's been a year and a half Ooh, yeah good looking